Is that better? You should be able to hear me now. Let me know if you can hear me. Good. Yay. Awesome. Oh. Sorry, I need to figure out how to slow down the chat. I'm using a new program. And I do want to say apologies to everybody for the... Uh, miscommunication on the time. I put AM not realizing. So I apologize. Hey, Janet Lynn, thanks for joining. Mr. The Giant Puppy and Mike. Cannot forget Mike. Kim, Sarah, and poor man. So when you put in an emoji, it doesn't necessarily show. It just gives me the lingo you would use to create the emoji. Uh, yep. Sorry about that, Rob. Oops. Here. Did I see that Northern Lights last night? I saw part of them for the last two nights, but uh, it was so cold outside that I didn't give it too much attention. The job hunt has just started, Carol. Um, I am just perusing the ads at this moment, but I haven't really found anything just yet. But to be honest with you, um, I'm looking at everything, regardless of whether or not it's in my field or not, just seeing what's out there. I've basically been looking on Indeed, which everybody's familiar with, CoolWorks, which basically shows seasonal work here in Alaska, and then also on, um, I think it's USA Jobs, which is government work. Hey, Annette, Whit, nice of you to join us, or me, I should say. Ashley, thanks for joining. Latasha Howard from Mobile App Alabama, Mobile. And Mr. The Giant Puppy says he shot his first shotgun today. How was it? I hope it was good. Rob says he's making cheese cake. Oh, yummy. see here. Good day there, Heather. Nice of you to join me. Kenai, Darlene, Kenai is on the floor behind me. He is laying down right behind me on the floor. Eventually, I hope to get a second camera and I'll do a split screen and have Kenai cam going for everybody at the same time. Yeah, last time I was job hunting that I didn't get referred to by a friend. It was also through the paper. This is true. Good evening, Clint. Janet says she's making sourdough bread tonight. That sounds yummy too. Have I ever considered starting my own business? Yes, I have had businesses in the past. I used to have a clothing design business. I had some interior design contracting work uh, that I used to do, and I used to have a cleaning business. Um, so yeah, I've done my own businesses before. I've given some thought to it up here, but I'm not exactly sure what I could do up here that would be profitable and um, successful, really. So. Have I seen any CDL truck driver jobs? That I actually haven't seen. Um, I'm sure there are driving positions posted because the um, oil crews, you know, now that they've gone to that Green New Deal type thing, uh, 
all the traffic on the highways is basically tankers. So you could find CDL drivers up here. Bill says, I managed to make supper, wild caught Alaska sockeye salmon, fire grilled with a cedar plank. Oh, in my honor. That's very nice. <laughs> and I will definitely tell uh, Kenai that Tally Girl says hello. Burgers and baked potatoes. That sounds good too. So Mar Mountain Mariner Ed, uh, he says, run a state snowplow truck would be nice if you could take it home every night too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I could use a state snowplow truck to come plow my driveway right now. That would be awesome. Hey, nice of you to join me. Gnome Sid says he's making salt taters and smoked salmon. So if uh, you haven't seen Gnome Sid's, uh, one of his most recent videos, he actually showed how to make salt taters. Robin's asking if I started my own business there, probably be profitable if you invested and sold very warm clothing. <laughs> yes, quite possibly. <laughs> Hello, Treasure Rescue. They are surprise, surprise, surprise. It's not 5 a.m. What do you know? Yeah, if you ran a snow plow in the summer, you probably wouldn't get very much work. But maybe you could switch over to a gravel truck in the summertime. Hey, Brenda, nice of you to join. And hello, Stephen. Nice of you to join from Florida. So when it comes to finding work up here, um, I am still truly looking for a job that I can do from the cabin because I have Kenai. But it's always fun to look and see what else is out there. You're pretending it's Alaska for the week. <laughs> oh, that's good. Have I considered an apprenticeship like Alaska Works Partnership Incorporated or Operating Engineers Training Trust? No, I have not. That I have not considered. I'll have to look into both of those. Hello, Janice from Louisiana. I have been with this company for five years, five, six years now, six years. Oh, thank you, Bessie. That's very nice of you. I love showing Alaska. That's one of the things that I love. So not only do I want to show my life and how I'm living, but I want to show Alaska too. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate the compliment. That's very nice. Oh, that's funny. Noam said says with the scenic drives play, to me it looks like they're driving other than the annoying ads that are playing. And Mountain Mariner. So in Talkeetna, there's a blizzard warning starting tomorrow at noon. Is that what you're saying, Ed? And then kaboom. Uh, no, I didn't make it to Ferrandi, but um, I know that it started last weekend and it goes through this weekend. But the Iditarod actually starts on Sunday. Hello, backwaters. Tell Wavy I said hello in Kenai, too. Hey, Creative Lori, nice of you to join. Yes, so it's funny that you mentioned the Starlink being available in Alaska now. I've been noticing when I look at the stars out the last couple of nights watching the aurora um, that there are a couple satellites that I can see that appear to be geo-positioned because they're not moving like a traditional satellite would. So I can only assume that those are Starlink satellites, but they're kind of annoying because they look like helicopters up in the sky because they have red and blue, red and green flashing lights on them. And they're much brighter than the stars are. Cook Inlet to Valdez, yikes. Well, I sure hope I can get the guy out here to plow my driveway because it needs it already. It's hard to navigate.
And I do want to say thank you to everybody for your uh, well wishes and your support and all the new members um, and Patreon and uh, Patreon that has come in over the last couple uh, days, I guess, days or week. I really appreciate it. But, um, yeah, I'm, I need all the prayers I can get. I'm not too, too worried about it. I'm pretty sure I can get a job, but you never know, especially with the way things are going these days. It's hard to say for certain who's hiring and, and what their hiring practices are. Uh, thanks, Jeff. I don't plan on stopping the channel. In fact, if anything, I plan on increasing what I'm doing on the channel. My day job took up so much of my time that I didn't really have a lot of, um, I didn't really have a lot of free time to be able to make uh, videos. So, and Batshiva is asking if Dewey is a moderator. Yes, Dewey is a moderator. This is my uh, friend. She's from Colorado. Uh, but she decided to change her name to Dewey. I thought it was funny. And Pam says she's taking her first trip to Alaska in May and be spending a month there. Yay, that's exciting. Where all are you going, Pam? Alaskan Women's Fashion Guide. <laughs> I don't I don't think that uh, most Alaskan women would want to dress the way I do. They probably think I'm crazy for wearing skirts all the time. Yes, I'm going to definitely take uh, my time in finding the next job and enjoy the time that it takes to find it. For one is I need to get some projects done around the cabin. There's been a lot of things that I've promised in videos, like the bit that I need to build, a uh, lamp that I need to repair, some quick videos, and once things warm up, I plan on going out more. Um, so definitely taking some time to myself, definitely taking uh, the time to enjoy the break between jobs, if anything. And thank you, Dana. I really appreciate that. Good night, Batshiva. I hope you have a good night. And Please uh, take care of yourself. Drink lots of water. Uh, get that kidney stone taken care of. That's very painful. Uh, sorry, uh, Bill. So Bill at Alaska's Last Frontier. Sorry you can't join tonight, but uh, I look forward to you being here on the next one. And I'm not going to see the banner at the bottom. But I will be doing another live stream for those of you who have difficulty uh, joining this one, or maybe you're in another part of the world where it'd just be easier for you. So Saturday nights at midnight, my time, um, I'll be running a live stream. So for those of you who are in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, things like that, it might be easier for you to join. And progress. I would like it if you could share my channel. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. That's that's very generous to, to mention my channel to other people. So I, I would love it if the subscribership, the viewership, really, it's really the views that, that really help out the most. Hello, Dave. Enter luck in Michigan. Lynn and Dave. Hello, hello. Am I going to work full or part time? Full time if I can, um, just because, you know, I'd like to keep the savings going and be able to know that, you know, should I lose that job that I have a nest egg to fall back on for a little bit. Um, full time is preferable, but if all I can find is part time work, then so be it. Yes, USA Jobs um, is one that I was mentioning that is mostly like government type contract. So uh, thanks, Billy. Yeah, I'm not giving up on the channel. The channel is here to stay. <laughs> Donna, I'm looking for a sugar. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that one. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, 
an original six. I, I hope my channel takes off. I, I hope so. I have to admit, I feel very fortunate to have all of you follow the channel and my adventures here. I think that for the first year, because um, I started this channel October 31st of 2021. So for the last year and a half that I've been doing this, I feel very blessed to be where I'm at right now. Um, and it's all because of you guys. It really is you guys tuning in and joining me here tonight on the last ones. And um, if it wasn't for all of you, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So I'm ever grateful for that. Yep. And I hope I find a job that I like to. That's why I'm going to take my time because I have taken jobs in the past that I didn't do enough research about the company or, you know, the inner workings of their, like, read the job reviews and things like that, and then stepped into the role and realized that it really wasn't the best place for me to be. Yeah, I wish I could start a new clothing trend. I <laughs> I, I would like to see other people uh, dressed. I should say, I would like to see other women dressed a little bit more femininely here in Alaska, but who am I to judge? It's not my place. <laughs> I say dress however makes you comfortable. That's what I say. Yes, I would like it if I could grow the channel uh, to provide some income. Right now, I would say the income level on YouTube is hobby level. So it provides me enough to... Um, buy some additional camera equipment, the SD cards, and gas, so I can do these scenic drives and what have you. I'm going to have to go back and read some of these comments because I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what Dewey is telling me all the time. Dewey tells me a lot of things. Some of it goes in one ear and out the other, as she'll tell you. How many subscribers do I need to be a YouTuber only? Um, it's really not based upon subscribers. It's based upon views um, because really the money that I'm making is primarily from the ad revenue, from the ads that play before or during a video. And the only way you see an ad is if you watch the videos. So it's really viewership that gets uh, the income level to rise. But it, it all depends, too, because depending upon what the video is about um, or even the niche that somebody has a channel in, to determine the amount of ad revenue that they're making off their channel. So this type of uh, vlogging channel doesn't really have as high of ad revenue as, say, um, a tech-based um, based channel would say like if you were talking about uh camera equipment or computers or something like that you're going to make more so i have a question because i do have a new camera speaking of and i can see it in and out of focus how is the camera the view that you guys are seeing in the sound is it good i have to scroll way down i'm really behind in these comments Jen, it's funny. <laughs> well, one of the other things about fashion up here in Alaska for women is you really can't find fashionable clothes up here. Um, other women in Alaska have commented on the way I dress and have said, yeah, you don't find clothes like that up here. So they were very curious where I got my clothes. Oh, yeah. Sarah says that the skirts get wet. Um, yeah, I would say the the snow that you have might be a bit more, uh, have a lot more water content than what I have here because rarely are my skirt hems wet after coming inside. They might have snow on them, but it's pretty dry, so it brushes off easily. The sound is sketchy now and then, Darlene says. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, that's a new new microphone and a new camera. So let me see if I can move the microphone closer and see if that helps. 
Let me know if that helps at all. And then I just saw, so Numstead says where he's at, that you have sugar snow. That's pretty much what I have here too. It's very dry. The only time that it's got any moisture to it really is when it rains during the storm. Yeah, the camera's trying to focus because I keep moving. If I was sitting still, it, it would probably stay better. And if I shut this off, like that. We'll shut that off and see if that helps. Yeah, Annette, uh, it's lagging because of my internet connection because I am on a DSL connection and I have an upload speed of one megabyte per second. So there is definitely a delay there. Hey, two bears, glad you can join us. Yes, please hit that like button. That helps too. That helps uh, YouTube promote the videos as well is uh, hitting that like button. It tells them that you guys like what you're seeing and then they'll continue to promote my videos to you and videos similar or live streams uh, similar as well. Yes. And I'm glad all of you are able to join. This is very, very nice. <laughs> Zero inches of snow. Do you ever get snow in Texas? And Rob says they're at a higher elevation and tend to be warmer, so their snow is probably a bit wetter. Yes. I, I would think so. Plus, that side of the state is a lot, has a lot more moisture than what I have here. Yeah, the sound could be from the DSL connection for sure. Yes, I, I need to get some quilted skirts as well. Um, very rarely, though, am I cold wearing my skirt, but there have been a couple of times where I've, I've thought about putting a quilted petticoat on. I think um, my bet that you're asking about the earlier time, that's because I had misscheduled it for a.m. That was my issue. I apologize. Good. I'm glad. There's. I see it hit and miss for people. Some people are saying it's still spotty and other people are saying it's good. So, Idaho snow problem is the wind and drifting. Yeah, the wind here um, at times can be pretty severe. Um, 60 to 80 mile an hour winds. On average, the wind speed here is about 30 miles an hour. But this time of the year during the winter time, there's hardly any winds. So um, when spring comes from spring uh, till basically October is when I'll experience winds here. <laughs> WKRP. <laughs> That's what that is, Mike. <laughs> charge the earbuds. Yes, <laughs> I'm guilty of that. I have my AirPods and they're never charged when I need them. Thank you, LaRue. I appreciate that. And no snow, snow in Florida. Yep, I would imagine not. So, uh, <laughs> dirt hair, <laughs> are you planning on making a, a, a voodoo doll of Kenai? <laughs> um, there is uh, merch on the web, on the channel page as well. So there's shirts and aprons and hats and um, mugs, all sorts of things, stickers. 
on the channel page. I believe if you go to the channel page, it's at the top where you can find that section. How much snow do you actually have there, poor man? And Clint says, rarely, but not like there. Yeah. The snow here, at least where I live, uh, is very similar to Colorado. The temperature is very similar to Colorado. But that's one thing about Alaska is it's so different from one side of the state to the other um, that, yeah, there's like microclimates throughout the state. Thank you for joining, Christina. I appreciate it. And I'm glad you were able to join. Uh oh, Steve Ling, Ling. I'm not sure how to say your name. Linging. Uh, tornadoes. Yikes. Tornadoes are never a good thing. Snow and keep. <laughs> yeah, if I could keep it from melting, I would. I would consider that one. Maybe I could just put some, like you said, Alaska dirt in a keychain. Hey there, D. Hefner. Yeah. I'm, you know, what's funny is I'm not ready for winter to be over. Like, I want the lakes and the rivers to open up so I can go fishing. But other than that, I'm not ready for winter. Uh, come to a halt. Yeah, I, I love this. Oh. Uh, you mean like um, Sean? Sean wears a kilt. Sean in Alaska. <laughs> I don't see him on here tonight. He's always outside working in his kilt. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yep. Sorry about that, Clint. But thank you for the like, nonetheless. Even though I'm a goofball and messed up. I'm uh, just wondering. Yes, yeah, so there are fellow Alaskans I have seen on here besides those even with the channel. Um, so like I know Nomestead is not the remote, not Mariner, uh, Last Frontier Homestead. I'm sure there's others in here that I've missed as well. Imagine. And it was no, she was military time dress girl. Yes, I know I should I should like figure out how to set it for military time so there's no mix up. You guys are uh gonna make my brain work tonight. I'll be going to sleep thinking about all the things that I can come up with to sell. <laughs> so John, I think if you hover over the chat, it'll slow down so you can read them all. Yeah, I have seen the northern lights for the last couple of nights. And in fact, the other night it was out and it was early. It was still pretty light outside and I could see the northern lights. Um, they're most prevalent about three or four o'clock in the morning, at least here. Um, but last night, they were there was quite the show. But um, I need to get a better camera because I typically film on my iPhone, and I wouldn't pick it up at all, even as bright as they were last night. I could not capture it. Um, no, I, I, long wool socks is about, about it. Petticoats just layer my skirts, but, um, yeah, I don't usually wear pants underneath my skirts. Not that I should tell the world that, but no, um, no tight, maybe once in a while, but usually just long socks. <laughs> yeah, knit. I would need to learn how to knit. Um, my sister tried to show me how to crochet one time and I couldn't even do a single strand. Um, I don't have the patience, I think, for fine detail work. Autograph. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, that's cute. Just get his old paw in an ink pad. No, the the whole balloon debacle that happened up by Prudhoe Bay. So that's about 1,500 or so miles away from where I'm at. That's way up on the northern slope. Yeah, I would uh, I would have to be sewing all the time to to market the the skirts. And fabric is so expensive anymore. It used to be it was more profitable to make your own clothes than it was to buy them. Right now, fabric is so expensive. So yes, Pat, there is merch on the channel. If you go to the channel homepage, if you just click on my channel name below my videos, um, and you look at the headers at the top of the channel page, all the right hand side you'll see uh, storefront or merchandise, and it's all in there. Um, it's through Shopify, I think. No, it's not. I, I forget who it's through. Sorry, I'm reading last night. So we started with snails, snowy hell last night before it turned to snow, then froze, expecting more tonight. Ooh, that would not be fun to drive on or for any plant life you might have in your yard. Right. I am going to be doing a garden. Um, it'll be a container garden this year, I think. And yeah, so in an upcoming video, um, I'm going to be starting some seeds and I'll start what I'm starting and why I'm planting what I'm planting. So Heather, you're, if I remember correctly, you're in Australia, correct? Um, so I'm glad, yeah, Australia. So I'm glad that you were able to figure it out and you were able to join me. But I will still hold the one at midnight because I know there's a lot of people tonight and aren't able to join. Um, so hopefully I can, you know, accommodate more people um, in the chat, that would be, that would be nice. Almost 70 in Ohio. That's, that's pretty warm. When it gets to 70 degrees here, it's, it's sweltering. <laughs> There's an old 70s song in there somewhere, Nomi. Good night, Kim. Have a good night. Thanks for joining. Today, four peaks was covered. That would be beautiful. I love seeing the snow-covered mountains behind the cabin. That's for sure. 25 mile an hour winds. That's still pretty strong winds. Hello, Justin. Thanks for joining. <coughs> and hello, Caesar from the Philippines. Nice of you to join. So poor man says he's only gotten six inches over the last three days of snow. And that's good. At least it wasn't feet of snow. So I think I'm going to be able to qualify for unemployment. Um, but I, I really need to look into it and figure out what all the requirements are and what I will qualify for. Um, but, you know, it only lasts. Um, for a short period of time, outlet. so it's encouragement to find a job to replace that income. Oklahoma had tornadoes last night. That's not good. So Carlos is asking if um, that he still wants companionship, and don't I feel that? Um, no. Um, I understand why people have that need for interaction and companionship and things like that. I do understand it, but um, I, I am an introvert. Even though you see me being very, you know, uh, lively on the camera and everything, um, I really enjoy being alone with my thoughts, and my time, and um, yeah, I, I like people being around for short periods of time. And then I like to just have my space. So when I was back in Colorado and I had a long-term boyfriend, um, we never lived together. And 
yeah. he'd come to my house, I'd go to his house and it'd just be for a short while at the time. Then like, okay, I'm going home now, or you can go home now. Um, I, th I think it's just the introvert in me more than it is anything, but. I'm going to move my microphone and see if that helps a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could even, if I got him up here, he would be knocking stuff over. Um, so right now he's sleeping. You can hear him. I don't know if you guys can hear me snoring away behind me. Pretty soon he'll start. Uh, dreaming and kicking, you'll hear his toenails uh, scraping the floor. Yeah, so you're in the Yukon, is that correct? Uh, poor me, I believe so. Probably have very wet snow compared to here. So Carrie's asking if I have solar. No, I do not have solar. I am on an electric grid, so I'm tied into well, the grid just like it would be in a city. And I'm not sure if I'll ever do solar. Um, Probably not whole home solar, if anything, but and I might do smaller solar. I've mentioned in a previous video about getting a lithium ion generator because I have frequent power outages here. Um, so if I did that, I would probably invest in some small mobile solar panels to power that um, along grid down situation. Yeah, and then Rob saying, um, just 30 to 40 miles can be a big change in the weather. And that's one of the things that you'll see if you're looking at traveling in Alaska is the road cameras are so far spread out, at least on this side of the state. They're so far spread out that um, it's almost useless to look at them because they there can be 100 miles between a camera and the weather can be greatly vast. Um, between the two of them, like so different between one and the other, that it's hard to use the weather cams to determine your driving. And then um, depending upon where you're at, there may not be a weather station where you are. So the best that I've found is going directly to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric um, Association's website. And you can click directly on the map where you're located and get pinpointed weather. But without that, any weather app I use think that I'm in Valdez and, or they think that I'm in Kona and I'm not. So it, it's just really hard to get good weather. Good night, LaRue. Thanks for joining. I'm glad you made it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I'd mentioned in the video, uh, bang, bang, that that I knew this day was coming. I just didn't know when. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised it lasted as long as it did. Something that I was working for um, has been going through a transition actually for quite a while. And um, I knew when I moved up here that the job was going to be ending within a couple of years. So um, it didn't really surprise me. And I was just going to ride the wave as long as it would carry me. And so I'm very happy that it lasted as long as it did. So Nit says they have rain and more rain. It was flooding last week. Oh, yeah. That is one thing that, um, depending upon where you live in Alaska, too, as spring approaches and the rivers start melting, uh, there will be flooding throughout the state in various places. So we, we feel you because that's definitely a thing here, too. <laughs> so Mike says that Mountain Mariner lives up the block from Santa Claus. Yeah, I think he lives up the hill from Santa Claus. Thanks for joining, Deb. Hope you have a good night's sleep, and I'm sure I'll hear from you soon. Thanks for joining, though. So, Karen, I am working with the microphone, hoping that it'll stop popping in and out like that but I don't I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna have to work with it 
I'm not sure where Tome or Tome is, so I couldn't honestly tell you. Um, yeah, bugs are bad. Really what's bad are two things, mosquitoes and flies. So we have fly season and mosquito season. Anytime the weather is 40 degrees or above, you're going to have flies. And then once it gets you know, warm on a consistent basis, then you're going to have mosquitoes, which everyone says is the state bird. Um, where I live, the mosquitoes are really tiny. Um, they're, you know, same size mosquitoes as you'd have in most places. But as you get to the more uh, closer to the Arctic Circle, I should say, then they're giant. They're like half inch, three quarter long, huge, monstrous <laughs> uh, um, things. Oh, so you're asking town. Okay, town. How far am I from town? Um, I'm about 50 miles from the nearest town. Rowan Mountain, Tennessee. Oh, well, thank you, Joni. I really appreciate that. I'm ready for winter to end, getting more snow tonight in the Matsu Valley. Yeah, I'm not. Like I said, other than the rivers and lakes, it can keep snowing. It can snow year-round, and I'd be a happy girl. Hey there, Tar Hill. I'm doing good, and it looks like most people in the chat are, too. And JR is an Alaskan at heart. <laughs> and no, nope, sorry, not ready for mosquito season, not yet. That's one of the reasons why the snow can stick around, for sure. Uh, no plans for chickens in the immediate future. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. But I still think if I did any poultry, it'd probably be ducks um, more than chickens. I just prefer ducks better. And they are prolific layers, too. Uh, thanks, Colorado Pack Rat. Good night, Ed. I'm glad you were able to join us. Uh, don't work too hard. Uh, yeah, Latasha. Um, I don't know that I would say self-taught. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Probably my mom is a lot to, to uh, thank me or to thank for that because, you know, she she did a good job raising me. So. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> I'm really behind in the comments here. Um, so I do procurement. I do purchasing and analytics reporting. Um, that's basically what I uh, do for work. Yep. Inventory management um, as best can be done from afar. calendar with my recipes that wouldn't be a bad idea that would that would probably be a good one you know it's funny that you say i should have shot that balloon down because the one in the yukon uh when i looked at it it looked like it was not too far away from uh, the canadian border behind me so i probably could have shot that one down if i could have seen it uh. I'm sure you're, I'm sure that Rob here is talking to Ed, um, but uh, yeah, I'm not <laughs> caught up on the conversation, so I'm not sure what to say about that. Thanks for joining, Chris. Uh, nice that you could finally make it. What time is it in Alaska? In Alaska right now, it is 5.40. Um, that's what time it is here in Alaska. Wow, I'm way behind in these comments. There's a lot of comments here. Uh, yep. Uh, CM Bethel, I lost my job uh, last week. Well, actually, I'm still employed for one more week. At the end of this week, um, then I will be seeking new employment. So, but it, I, I knew it was coming.
Sorry, I'm trying to get caught up here, so I'm scrolling through the comments. How if you apply to the Tourism Bureau and get paid to be the awesome Alaska listener? <laughs> that would be nice if, if I could just work from home making YouTube videos for the Alaska Tourism Board. That would be nice. Uh, and yes, JR, I agree with that. There's definitely a difference between being alone and lonely. I I don't I don't ever really get lonely um, or bored. I'm always too go, go, go to get bored. And I'm cracking myself up. And and maybe that's one of the other reasons why I don't look at uh, getting a companion anytime soon is because most people don't get my sense of humor. <laughs> and so I either get the side eye or the, okay. Uh, but when it's just me, I get to laugh at my own jokes. And you know, that's talking about the temperature changing as you're driving. That is definitely true. Um, in fact, just, um, you know, within a couple of miles of each other, they don't even have to be, you know, that, that many miles apart and the temperature will change. Um, I would still like to work from home, Christina. Yep. Because of Kenai. Um, there's nothing really close to me. And so, um, if I was working away from home, I'd have to leave him home all day and what have you. So I would rather uh, have a job that I can work from home still. Good night, John. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you made it. Don't don't work too hard splitting that firewood. Hey, Jeff. Nice of you. Can, you can join us. So I'm not sure if you uh, uh, saw the banner at the bottom of the screen, but I am doing a midnight run essentially on Saturday for a live stream. So hopefully you'll be able to join then. Uh, nope, I'm still going. I'm like normal, I'll go for a while. I'm not, you know, I said it for an hour, but honestly, uh, I'm willing to go for a while here. There's no need for me to jump off right at it on an hour. Good night from Ohio along the beautiful shores of Lake Erie. Thank you for everything you do. You'll find a job. Just give it time. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the support there. I, I'm not too worried about it. I'm sure there's something out there. One nice thing about working remote is I can look throughout the whole nation and I can kind of hand pick companies uh, to look at. So I'm not just, you know, restricted to the area in which I live. Yeah. So that if you're close to water, you're going to see more mosquitoes, as Rob is saying, um, the Alaskan vampires. Um, you know, I have not thought about installing um, bat houses here, but I know we do have bats um, in the spring and summertime. I can, well, really more in the spring and fall, I can see them. Um, but I'm always confused. Like, what do they do in the summer and the winter? Good night, Chris. If you're checking out for the evening, thanks for joining. And yes, the messages are going in order. I'm just way behind. Stopped eating carbs, sugar, mosquitoes. Leave me alone now. I used to get welts from them. Yeah. Also, if you wear dark clothing, they tend to like dark clothing. Is the other thing I figured out. Good night, Wayne. Thanks for joining. Hey, Sean. Thanks for joining.
There's so many comments. I, I'm having a hard time keeping up. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. Everything will work out with the income stream. Yes, it will. It'll just take time. And like I said, I'm going to be a bit picky uh, this go around and look for the right job for me. And thank you for the compliments on the channel, too. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I'm, I'll am i try two bears to look for a job for you too, but I think I'm going to have a hard enough time finding my own. That's funny. But if I see something, you know, that, that fits in the things you've mentioned before, I'll, I'll pass it along. <laughs> one, one work of, or one week of work left. Yep. And all the stuff you could order to your cabin. Yeah. If, if only I actually had a P card to purchase things. No, I would never do that. I would never, ever do that. But uh, yeah, that's not the type of purchasing I do. Everything's with the PO. There's no, there's no P card there. Severance pay. Yeah, um, I don't think so. I work for a mom and pop, a very small uh, business. So yeah, there won't be a severance package on this one. Yeah, I am always cracking myself up. Hello, lady watching from Australia. Nice to have you join me, Red Sea Goddess. And you are welcome for allowing me to share my life with you. Uh, yes, I appreciate you watching. And Sam Bethel. Once you work remote, you never want to leave. Yep, that is true. It's hard to think about going back into the workplace and punching a time clock every day and um, that interaction and, you know, putting your lunch in the communal fridge and hoping somebody doesn't eat it. Hurry back, Janet. Hey, JC. I didn't realize the northern lights were that strong right now that you could see them clear down in Kansas. That's pretty strong. Hey, Kathy, thanks for joining. Um, I bet I am looking for any type of work um, within inventory analytics or purchasing that I can do remote. And Zeta says the bats migrate to warmer climates. I did not realize that bats were migratory. So that's good to know. But I, I wondered, because like I said, it's so cold here. And then in the summertime, it's so bright out that you know, there's no darkness for them at night here. Mike says the snow is contagious. Everyone watch out. Thank you, living in the forest. And Thomas says he spent many years up here mining. I know the mines are still hiring. Um, there's a lot of mines up here, different types of mines as well. Hi, Joan. Thanks for joining. Um, I have no idea if they're going to end the uh, permanent fund dividends, the PFDs, but I know right now is when you need to be applying for this year's uh, PFD. So I need to get on that and get my application in. Yes. So Tanya's asking um, if I've looked on Indeed. Yes, I have looked on Indeed, USA uh, Jobs, Cool Work, and uh, you know the private uh, jobs. As you go into each type of uh, business, usually at the bottom of their web page, they'll have jobs listed in their own web pages. 
I I'm just starting my search, but yeah, I've been looking everywhere. So, and it'll take a, a while before the emails and the calls start coming in uh, based upon the applications. So, and Mom for Bell wants to know what I miss uh, most from the lower forty-eight. Um, the rivers and the lakes. Uh, that's probably it. Yeah, I really miss fishing, um, but I can't really think of much else that I missed from the lower 48. Yeah, and then Pat saying to check with the state of Alaska for a job. Yep, that's also another good uh, choice to do. Local co-op. Um, I'm not sure if there is a co-op in this area. I'll have to look in. And career builders, that's another one, yep. We also went to in deep caves. Uh, the house I built in has bats and they try to Follow the bug hatch. That makes sense. When the skeeters die off in the fall, the bats leave. That makes sense. No food, no need to stay. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten quite a few people suggesting that I turn the bunkhouse into an Airbnb. Um, maybe. Maybe someday I'll get there. But right now, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. <laughs> I, would, I would be swamped. I'd just be constantly managing reservations. I wouldn't have a chance to see Alaska. What food do I miss that I cannot get in Alaska? Um, Tex-Mex, I think, is the one thing that I really haven't seen here, um, which is Mexican, Texan-style Mexican food. Um, but other than that, uh, I can't think of anything. I honestly can't think of anything that, yeah. There's there's some really good food in Alaska. I have to admit, there there is some good food for sure. Oh yeah, that uh, that's one thing that I can't get here is crawdads. So uh, this is kind of embarrassing, but it's definitely true. So I keep mentioning rivers and lakes and how um, I wish they would open up. One thing that we don't have here in the rivers and lakes is crawdads, and I love going mud bugging. <laughs> My friends are watching this and they're laughing because they know it's true. Um, I definitely love crawdads. So, yeah, that's one thing we don't have here. But I could get them flown in, but I wouldn't trust it coming all the way from Louisiana into here. Do I have any medical experience? I have very little medical experience. Um, so I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that the experience I have would actually lend itself to me getting a job in that field. Uh, thanks, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, those, uh, the, I had been planning on doing something with that song for a while. And so I just figured uh, this is as good a time as any to do that because, yeah, it, it's just my way of saying that no matter what happens to you in life, that you should always just, you know, remember to dance, just remember to roll with it and uh, make the most of every day. So, companies open remote positions tomorrow morning. Uh, nice. Uh, thanks for doing that, Costa 16 Auto. Uh, I appreciate that. And welcome back, Bill. I'm glad you're able to join. What's my favorite fish to hook? Trout. Um, honestly, I'm from Colorado. So really in Colorado, you don't have a whole lot of options. There's some kokanee salmon, which is a landlocked salmon. Um, and then there's trout and pike, walleye, um, musky. Um, but really, I like trout. Trout is, and there's bass in Colorado, but um, trout is what I have the most experience with, I should say. Let's 
let's see here. Do you put out seeds for the birds and squirrels? I do not. Um, one of the reasons that I don't is because I don't want to encourage other wildlife to come in. Um, I figure just there's no need. There's plenty of food source for them out here um, in the wintertime. And the birds really aren't around too much. The only bird I see in the wintertime here so far has been the Canadian gray jays. And um, they eat the scraps that go in my bucket that I dump all my dishwater and on food scraps in. Not that it's food scraps, but it's like the little tiny crumbs. All that they pick through. I don't know if you guys can hear Kenai snoring and growling in his sleep. Would I consider a small windmill as an off-grid power source? I'm not sure because, again, it'd be the same thing for um, the solar. In the wintertime, when there's more power outages, um, there's really no wind. So it probably wouldn't do me a whole lot of good in the winter months here because the air is really still. Um, you can stand outside and you could have a candle or a match lit and it wouldn't flicker at all because the air is so still here. Good night, Mr. The Giant Puppy. I hope you have a good night and thank you for joining. And Carol's asking, when will I have mail again? I will start going to the post office in April. So in about a month from now. Um, so if your email is on your um, channel page, I can send you an email, but otherwise you can find my email um, on the about me on my channel page on Northern Cave Creations. And um, you can always email me there as well with any, you know, job suggestions. Uh. <laughs> I'm not answering that question. Um, no, honestly, I don't. I'm I'm not one for that. I I just like the body. I'm not really about the brain section. It's pretty gross, actually, if you ask me. Yep, I'm I'm a mud bugger. <laughs> I should make a t-shirt that says that I'm a mud bugger. But coming from Alaska, people are like, that doesn't make any sense. Did you get much snow up there from the storms Alaska has been sending to lower 48? Not here. Um, I've gotten a few inches of snow over the last couple of weeks, like three weeks, maybe a few inches here and there. But I really don't have that much snow here. Good night, Deborah. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Yep. And trout never stop fighting. That is one of the reasons that I like trout. Because they don't give up. And Beth is asking if I have experience with fly fishing. I do have experience with fly fishing. I'm self-taught. So I can't say that I'm good at it. But my favorite way of fishing is with a fly and a bubble. So not a bobber, but a little air bubble and a very tiny, tiny little fly. And I absolutely love it. I think it's it's the best. And fly fishing for salmon. I, I'm going to try it, but uh, we'll see how it goes. And Bill is saying bears love seeds, especially bird seeds. Yep, yep. I would be afraid that I'd be bringing in lots of unwanted critters. And Rob saying, don't want squirrels around the cabins. We feed the black caps and the gray jays. I'm sure the, the birds and the squirrels do put on quite the show. And I, I've thought about it for that reason, just to be able to watch them more. But honestly, if it wasn't for all the other wildlife that is around here, um, I probably I probably would do it. But all the other wildlife, like I, do, I don't want to encourage the fox to come in and the coyotes and wolves and the wolverine, um, who I haven't seen this winter, thank goodness. So, yep, that coho, I'm sure. I, I'm hoping to get some Copper River Reds this year, hoping they put up a, a little bit of a fight, even though probably being a fish wheel or dip netting, just depending upon what I choose on my license. Uh, 
let's see here. What do you plan to do next after your time in the Alaska cabin or is this permanent home for me? Hello, Border Collie. This is my permanent home. This is my forever home. So, yep, I'm. this is it. Not really planning on moving anywhere else or going there. I hope to live out my days. Let's see here. Have I seen Raven steal trash from a pickup? Seen one flip a garbage can at the car wash in Delta. Um, I have not seen the Ravens do anything here. There's, there is a Raven here that mocks me, though. If I'm back in wood, he flies over and he mimics the sound of the wood dunking against the other piece of wood. But, um, yeah, really, I, I hear Ravens once in a while, but not really which is kind of nice to be honest with you because they can be kind of a pest at times. Let's see. How about eagles? Do you see them around you? No, I'm not close enough to the water for the eagles. Um, there were a couple juvenile eagles that I saw uh, last summer, um, like twice in the summer, but I'm a couple miles from a river. I got rivers surrounding me on all sides, but I'm not close enough to any of them to actually see the eagles. They generally are sitting right on the banks of the um, river. And CJ, again, you, you're more than welcome to email me. My email is um, alone in remote Alaska at gmail.com. Um, but you can always find it in the About Me page as well. And you can email me there. Uh, yes. Thanks, Bill. And yes, I agree with Annette that, yeah, it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. But if you've never gone, if you've never gone mud bugging, if you've never gone to catch crawdads, um, it, it would be hard to explain how much fun it actually is. And knowing that they're invasive and you're helping to remove an invasive species um, means a lot as well. Hello, Rhonda. Nice of you to join. an online shopping page for Alaskans. That would be good. Like, honestly, that's what I think. If I'm going to start a business, I would like for it to be um, something online, something that would help others. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, I just had it too. Sorry about that. Can one of the moderators throw up the, um, there we go. There it is. There's my email address, alone in remote Alaska at, at gmail.com. Florida lobsters are not the New England lobster, but they're fun to catch. Hello, Wayne. Nice of you to join me. Hello, Trisha. And I agree with Norm said the bald eagles are pretty flying rats. Yeah, they're they're into everything and they're bullies. They will bully crazy. <laughs> yep, I'm sure there's a lot of us that eat the mud bugs, but I'm sure most people would prefer we probably didn't call them that, but that's what they are. Thank you, uh, Northern Cove. I really do appreciate your your help in this search.
small land lobsters, would that be crawdads also? Because uh, the mud bugs, they they actually crawdads, they actually burrow into the mud. So when the rivers go down, and you'll find their little nest in the banks of the rivers. That's why we call them mud bugs. Come from Vietnam. Ooh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Vietnam, but what I am saying is like just thinking about that because you want to eat them when they're live. Well, you don't want to eat them live, but you want to get them when they're live and then you know, cook them right away. And just thinking about them coming from halfway around the world, uh, that that bothers me. <laughs> the meat supply is doing well. Thank you, Midnight Madness, for asking. Um, yeah, it's, it's doing well. I'm going to be doing some canning of it. I need to get a lot of it canned um, and out of the freezer. I don't want it to get freezer burnt. But yeah, the supply is holding up well. The pantry supply is holding up well. So doing doing good there still. Hey Jay, nice of you to join too. A homemade well driller. I am doing well. I'm glad to see you here. Is there meat on a crawdad? Yeah, it's like um it would be comparable to a small shrimp. Um and it tastes like lobster, essentially. It's like a miniature lobster or a miniature crayfish if you're from Australia. Thank you, YouTube user. I hope I get a new job soon too. Um, but I was saying, hopefully not too soon. I am I'm gonna take a little bit of time and catch up on some things that I'd like to do. Hello, Debbie. Nice of you to binge watch my videos. I love that. Um, I hope that you found them all entertaining. Uh, I called them bait, but they are yummy. <laughs> yeah, they, you can use them for bait as well, depending upon what you're catching, that's for sure. Uh, yes, bacon on a string works well. Or if you happen to catch another like small fish, uh, like a sunfish or something, um, you can, you know, Coax them in with that as well. Boudin, now that's what I miss. Yes, like a miniature lobster. That's exactly what they are. Hi, Terry. Nice of you to join. Oh, and then Mike says, I just need to open a 7-Eleven. Oh, um, I knew you were going to pull through for me, Mike. You, you come up with all the solutions to everything. So now if only I could rake up the money for the uh, franchise license. Oh, that's funny. You never thought of eating them. Yeah, you have to you have to purge them. So you need to rinse them really well um, in a few baths of really cold water to get all the grit and the sand and everything out from them and then just boil them up and they're really good uh thank you ernie's cabin i appreciate you um coming to the chat and also uh for the compliment i really appreciate that well can i get a friend to play with no Unfortunately not. Kenai's pretty jealous. Um, he doesn't really like any other dogs around me. <laughs> so last year when my contractor was here, we had to keep his dog and Kenai separated at all times. Um, they He just can't handle other, other dogs around, which is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, my mother did not say I was a genius. She... <laughs> She's, she's probably survived. I made it this far. Yeah, if I opened up a, a McDonald's, a 7-Eleven, a Taco Bell, people would freak out. That's for sure. There's not a whole lot of fast food up here. In fact, I know there's McDonald's in Alaska. I know there's one in Fairbanks. I don't know if there's one elsewhere, though. I can't picture it.
chicken legs for catching. Yep, chicken legs are another good thing for catching or chicken livers or even a can of cat food for catching uh, crawfish. A dollar general. Uh, yeah. Up here, though, it'd be $20 general. Rob's saying that there's a number of fast food places in Wasilla. Yeah, I've seen. I know I've seen the fast food places. I just can't think of them because I don't generally stop there. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, Anchorage probably has its fair share, too. Mumstead says, Wasilla and Palmer have it all. McDonald's and Wasilla, Palmer, Anchorage, and possible elsewhere. It is a 357. 357 Magnum is what I carry on my hip. And I also have a 10, milli 10, 10 millimeter is what I also carry. Good night, Zeta. Thanks for... Uh, joining us tonight. I appreciate you being here. Boosties and Glen Allen would do well, but you've got the hub to compete with. Yeah, the, the hub in Glen Allen um, is, for those of you that are not familiar, it is a um, gas station, but it's it's got like a little gift store in it and what have you. Um, and it's swamped. It is always, always busy. There's a line to get gas there. Even though there's a gas station just down the road that's cheaper. Nighty night, Amy. Thanks for joining. I'm glad you made it, even if you're checking off for the night. And thanks for coming also, Thomas. I'm glad you were able to join. Yep, I love the 10 millimeter too. It is a nice gun. I was worried that uh, it wouldn't, the grip wouldn't fit nicely in the palm of my hand, but it actually is a very nice gun. I love that gun. Moving to the Willow area this year from Oregon. Yep, 10 millimeter can't go wrong. I'm sure there are some people that say you need a bigger caliber, but um, I think it would do you well. Yeah, I wondered about opening up a restaurant here, uh, Tex-Mex and, uh, you know, some more rustic type cooking. Um, but I'm not sure if there's enough population in this area to make it successful. Use the seam net to catch fried eggs. Yeah, I've always caught them by hand. I've not even used a trap. I've tried using a trap and I just don't have the patience for it. So I always catch them by hand. Hello, Jude from Northern Ireland. Yep, the 357 has a kick to it, but it's not too bad. It, it, I've shot stuff that's worse. So, and Barbara from Hawaii, nice to have you here. Yeah, I carry the 357 or the 10 mil, and I always carry bug spray, bug, bear spray. Sorry, got mud bugs on the brain uh but bear spray with me as well oh that's not good i'm glad you were able to protect yourself christina sorry i gotta reposition myself here i i always say you can never have too much protection and never be too careful mrs smith thanks for joining us tonight i'm sure you took that a long time because i'm sure i'm way behind on the comments again but thank you for coming in Yeah, if only I had a reloading bench, uh, not so, that would be nice, but I don't have one as of yet. So I, something I'm probably going to look into down the road. <laughs> oh, Panda Express. Oh my goodness. That's, I used to eat Panda Express back in Colorado, but that's funny. When does the last great race begin the Iditarod? Um, Sunday. Sunday, the 4th of March is when the Iditarod um, starts. Hey, Mama for Lori. 
Yep, the cold weather, I love it. It's I'm doing good here. It's it can stay cold. I'm I'm loving it. Hey Jay. Yep, I am enjoying these live streams too. And I'm glad that I get to answer you guys' questions in real time and talk to you guys in real time. Um, and I'm glad to see so many of you are able to join me. So thank you, all of you. I really appreciate it. There it says that is the choice of the FBI is the 10 mil. And hello, Jude. Any bears lately? Nope. The, I haven't seen any bears hardly at all this year. Um, only the one back in September, and I haven't seen anything since. Should you take a job in Glen Allen? Is it safe to live there? Two bears. Um, I think safety can be an issue just about anywhere you live. But um, what I would suggest doing is checking out the Alaska Troopers report, which you can just literally type that in Alaska Troopers report and you can search um, for any location and then you can get an idea of what the crime is in the area that you're considering. Um, and then the one thing about Glen Allen is that it can be hit and miss on the property there because there's um, a lot of marsh land around there. So the water table is kind of high there. Um, a lot of people have said that they own property there, but they can't get to it most of the year because it's just swamp. So it's hit and miss. Attacked by a large black bear. Um, my two dogs, Shep and Doby, were on him swinging, ran him off, never had a chance to draw and fire. They fought a problem for my life. That's nice. Gus, I am very glad that you're here, not only in the live chat, but that you're here after that because, yeah. The, I'm praying that I never actually have to fire my weapon. Um, and I'm praying that uh, Kenai never has to get involved with a predator either. That can be really scary. Good night, Marla. Thank you for the compliment and also uh, for the well wishes. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you coming in here tonight. 44 mag uh, with eight and three eight barrel less in a 357. Yeah, I think it depends upon the barrel for sure. Um, mine is a snub nose and I, I don't think the, the kickback on it's that bad at all. Of the 44 mag, but thinking more than six shots would be good sometimes, which is why I have the 10 mil, honestly, uh, because there's definitely more rounds in the chamber, or not in the chamber, but in the magazine. Yeah, a good Mexican restaurant, I think, would probably make a lot of money, especially for people that are coming in from out of state. Um, yep. What you know, honestly, I would say go to your local armory, to your local um, gunsmith and ask them what they recommend. Because um, my personal preference is to get something that you're comfortable with, um, that you can hold in your hand that you can conceal when you need to conceal and that you can draw easily. And it's going to be different for everybody. And it depends upon what you're trying to protect yourself against. If you're trying to protect your home, I would say get a shotgun. Don't get a handgun if you're just protecting your home. But if you're going to go conceal carry when you're out and about, uh, get a gun that you can conceal on your person and that you can easily draw. And that, um, yeah, I wouldn't go with the 22. Uh, for that purpose, but you know, uh, my my conceal is a 38 special, and that that does just fine for me on on my everyday off the property carry. And yep, just use good solid bullets uh, that are meant for penetration. Yep. Oh, thank you, Mike. I really appreciate that. That's very generous of you. I really really appreciate that. Yes, yes, that's very, very generous. Thank you very much. Yeah, I I need to learn how to reload. My ex-husband um, had a reloading bench um, 
unfortunately we bought it for him after he and I had already divorced the kids and I did, but, um, I definitely need to learn to, to do that for sure. There's a panda in wall in Wasilla and Anchorage as well. Uh, the job search has just begun. So I've got a couple applications out now, but, um, more that I'll be putting in over the next few days and weeks, I'm sure. But I, I literally just started looking. So I just found out last week, um, I don't remember what day of the week it was, Wednesday, Thursday of last week. And then um, I basically just took the weekend to kind of let all the anxiety and everything settle down. And then I started looking here just over the last two days and have put in a couple applications so far. Good night, Debbie. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here. Look into the Magnum Research 4570. Yep, that's that's what I have. Um, well, I have a 4570, so that's what I'm saying. If you can get a shotgun to protect your home, you're going to have a greater chance of hitting a target um, or multiple targets if there's multiple people breaking into your home than you would with a single shot revolver or pistol. Don't open food or a coffee shop that is a 24-7 job. I did it four years and even lived in it because there was so much to do. Lost uh, 100 grand in that one, but I did have some fun and went for Greece to another. Yeah, I've, I've thought about that. Like that would be a full-time commitment and I wouldn't be able to necessarily go fishing and all the things that I want to do. But um, I might still eventually think about a restaurant, but I don't know. It's a lot of work, a lot of work. King Cobra and 357, yep. And hello, Ashley. I meant to say hello to you earlier. I saw your name pop up and I didn't get a chance to click on you. I think I read buyer as the position you're looking for. Any special commodity type? Nope, a widget is a widget, a thing is a thing. Um, so yep, a buyer for sure, procurement, um, but it doesn't matter what it is, I mean, in the industry that I'm working in now, it's um, scientific based, but I don't need to know the science behind it. I just need to know the math. That's all I need to know. So yeah, it doesn't matter what it's in. At least not from my perspective. It might from the employer's perspective, but not from mine. Oh, thank you, Robert. Yep, I will definitely be giving it a shot here in a couple of weeks, starting some seeds. Walk out there and smack that bear on its big old behind. <laughs> I think I would be afraid to get to the that close to the bear. Um says the three best rounds for Alaska are 44 mag, a 30 out six, and a 12 gauge. You can go into any village and find rounds. Yep, I believe that for sure. Good night, Beth. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here. And Patriot says that the bears will stalk you. It's very, the bears will stalk you. That is one of the things about the bears is they will scope you out. And so will the wolves. Uh, they'll, they'll scope you out. And uh, yeah, they, they're curious about you and, and they'll plan their attack. That's for sure. Alaskans love Mexican food. Hmm. Maybe I'll start a food a food truck. <laughs> uh, Mexican food on wheels. Popping in for a minute to say hello. Thank you. Love God. Love freedom. It's nice to have you here. And uh, there'll be another live on Saturday at midnight if you're able to join then. Saturday midnight my time, that is. Bears was searching for jobs yesterday and there was one in Glen Allen that fit him and looked okay. Yep. You should give it a go. There ain't no time like the present to follow your dreams. And Clint carries a 357 with a six inch barrel everywhere. That's like the dirty, hairy. You got to have that dirty, hairy uh, holster for that. That's a pretty big gun with the six inch barrel. Good night, Sylvia from Canyon, BC. Sweet dreams to you as well. And again, thanks for popping in. I appreciate it. 
black bears are bad for attacks. I was chased by one, and yes, they could run fast downhill, shot it in the head, and landed 15 feet in front of me. That's a little too close for comfort. But yeah, even the grizzlies run fast. Everything, you'd be surprised at how fast the, the large creatures are here. Yep, and I protect myself from both two- and four-legged creatures. Hello, John. Nice to have you in here tonight. If I live with polar bears. Yeah, luckily I don't have polar bears here. Um, but up on the North Slope, they do. So Prudhoe Bay, Barrow, they definitely have uh, polar bears up there. Australian dogs are the best dogs I've ever around um, when you have bears. Yeah, I've thought about getting a bear dog. Um, but I also thought about would I be able to control that dog? I'm not sure. They're, they can be a handful for sure. 1911, 45 caliber. Yep. It's telling you to buy your own super chat. I think you did it right. I saw the hundred dollars come through. So I think you did it right. I appreciate it too. It, it, it's awesome that you did that. That really helps. <laughs> and Dennis says he fought off a whole package of gummy bears. Um, it was a tough fight. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Tin Mill should always do the job. I just had him two feet from my face. Dogs rock. Do you have any dogs? So, Gus, I have Kenai, who is asleep on the floor behind me. Let's see if I can get him to come up here. Come here, Kenai. Come here. Come here. Come here. Up. Up. Can you come up? Come on. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see him or not. No, other side. Come over here. But I have Kenai, who is, I believe, part Black Lab and part um, Newfoundland. So he is, he is a giant boy. Come here. Up. There's an arm on this chair and he doesn't want to jump on it. Up. Come on. Up. Up. You can do it. Come on. <laughs> we'll see if he'll come up. Come here. I don't have anything to offer you. You want a piece of candy? Yeah, come here. You want this? Up. Come on. Up. Up. All the way. All the way. Uh. <laughs> and it's dark in here. Let's see if I pop this open. Can you see him? There he is. There's my pretty boy. <laughs> so he's a good guy. Um, he's great protection, but he does not... He does not get along with other dogs. So he is a solo child at the moment. Sorry, buddy. You can't actually have that. Um, he's a good boy, huh? Okay, you got to go lay down now. Now he's going to be wanting attention. <laughs> that Mike's saying that's this, my down payment for the 7-Eleven. <laughs> Are we equal partners? Wait, uh, I got. I'm gonna have to renegotiate my contract. I think. Are jobs scarce out there in Alaska? Um, it depends upon what industry you're looking in, and some jobs are definitely seasonal. Jobs that you would be surprised are seasonal, um, but I think it just depends upon what you're really looking in. There, it's funny when you look at the job listings, um, depending upon the area of the state that you're looking in, there might only be, I don't know, 15 to 20 listings. But if you're looking like Anchorage or Fairbanks, um, you know, if you're looking for more of an office type job, there are more listings, that's for sure. Great deals on reloading equipment at garage sales. Not much has changed over the years. Yep, this is true. It's it's one of those uh, things that doesn't really need constant updates like everything else that we have in our lives these days. And Lynn says she re-reload. I love it because handguns are so difficult to have in Canada. We only have rifles, a shotgun with slugs for the house, and a 30 out 6 for hunting. Yeah, I'm praying and knocking on wood that um, things don't change here because I know they're they're definitely trying. An AK-47 pistol with a 30-round mag will protect the home. <laughs> yes, it would. Food industry 
is a pain in the tail. As a former chef, it's not worth it. Yeah, I think my problem is, is that I'd want to eat everything I'm cooking and then I would probably balloon up. My dad used to say, because I was constantly eating, that um, one day I was going to, like all that weight was going to hit me at once and I'd get stuck going through a door. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Yep. I always keep my chin up. I'm always looking on the bright side of things and I'm sure things will work out. So, but thank you. I appreciate that. I don't, that's, that's trusting right there to be able to buy crawdads from Walmart. Um, the ones that I've seen in the Asian markets back in Colorado, those came from China and I wasn't so sure that I wanted to eat them um, just because of the pollution. It is not as bad as most things. Um, one thing most employers here do understand, salmon are running and it's moose season. Yeah, so that's one of the things that if you're moving to Alaska that you have to become accustomed to is when it's moose hunting season, the business is closed down and you're not going to get your normal appointment or what have you. Um, and when it's salmon season, same thing. They'll shut down for a week to go to the salmon run. Job is coming in three weeks. That's good. Yay, Jay. That's awesome. Hey, Victoria. Nice to have you here. And thanks for binging the videos as well as watching. Um, and joining the live. I appreciate that. Yep. I am living the good life. I cannot deny that. I am. This is a dream come true for sure. Can you get one moose to last one year's meat? Yep. Yeah. If I were to get a moose, um, I would definitely have more than enough meat in the freezer and I would be able to share it with those in my community as well. Just purchase a nice rocket launcher. I take home security very seriously. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my goodness. Have I gotten any good pictures or videos? And not this year. Um, so before I had the iPhone 12, I think it was, and I could get some really good shots of the Aurora Borealis, at least, you know, good enough for an iPhone. But the I have the iPhone 14 and it will not pick up the northern lights. Um, it does not capture the light at all in the sky. So I need to get a better camera for that. Is it true that men outnumber the women 10 to 1 out there? No, I don't think so. I think it used to be that way. Um, but honestly, I think now that it's probably, it, depending upon where you live, um, I think it's actually more women than men in some areas. Um, I don't I don't think it's a good ratio anymore. Yeah, a short barrel is not as accurate. That is correct. Yep. Yep. You gotta practice your aim more so with a short barrel. This is true. Connect your food truck to your snow plow. <laughs> uh, I, I like that idea, Heather. I think that's brilliant. Uh don't sweat all the gunslingers with opinions with what you're comfortable with. That is correct. That's why I said, find what works for you and, and then practice, practice, practice. Hey there, KB. Nice of you to join us all the way from Australia. I shot a bear four times at 20 feet with a 44 and he kept coming 30 out six to the head. Finally got him. Yeah. That, that is one of the things that I worry about is like, if I do get a bear on the property that it's going to be right there at my feet um, before I actually, you know, get a true shot in him, that's going to put him down. I can't get on the moose list either. Yeah. I know that, in the area where I live, um, I've heard of several people in this area that have gotten a moose off the moose list this year. Um, 
So the moose list is if there is a, a moose gets hit by a vehicle, the state patrol will go down a list of individuals and contact the next person on the list. And then you only have a certain length of time to get out there and harvest that moose off the side of the road. Um, so roadkill is a thing in Alaska. Um, yep. But it's meat that would otherwise go to waste. <laughs> Two bears. <laughs> yep. I think your options might be good here. <laughs> More women than men now. Oh boy, just wait till they get a look at my new mud boots, lol. <laughs> yeah, and you have to be on the road system. That's true. Oh, wait, do you you have to be on the road system. So even you who lives in Alaska, but because you're not on the road system, you can't get on the list for a moose kill. I never realized that. That, that makes sense though, I guess, because how else would you get it up to your cabin? Or a trail close to the tracks, out issue need two households. I, I'm I'm assuming that means other issues you need two households. Women up near men, like a virus taking over. <laughs> I guess it depends upon how you look at it. <laughs> And there is the link in case anybody's interested. Thank you, Bill, for that. And Ed is saying he doesn't believe so, but he could be wrong. Must be able to be on site in 45 minutes to claim the moose. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that it was a pretty short window that you had to be able to get to the moose. So you don't have to be in the road system, but you only have a max of 30 or 45 minutes, as Nomi is saying, to get to the kill or it goes to someone else. Wow. You have to have two households when you attract no one else around us to get on the list. Helicopter a dead roadkill moose out to my cabin when they walk through my yard nearly every day, right? That's the thing. It's like. They're so prevalent that, yeah, it's almost, you could go hunting from your back door. So no moose here in California where uh, Ron is at off-grid homesteading McGarvey style, but plenty of deer. They come to the yard, probably not with the dog though. Yeah. I almost wonder if that's one of the reasons why I haven't seen um, as many bears this year is because of Kenai. Um, I know they'll still come around even if he's here. But I think just his scent has probably made them go just a little off their normal tracks. Alaska has a ton, a ton of regulations, so many regulations. I was looking at the hunting uh, and the fishing guides, and it makes your head spin trying to figure out what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do in any given minute of any given day. <laughs> well you do in the in the winter time you just uh you know just bury it in all those snow mounds you have out there ed if you don't show in time you are iffy the list you can also can't turn too many calls down yeah yeah that's true if you keep turning them down then they'll just take you off the list <laughs> Uh, thanks, Ron. I appreciate it. I'm not sure if you're talking to me or if you're saying someone else is doing good, but I appreciate you being here. Gus says he's had a ranger friend in Alaska. She or he always carried a 12 gauge. First several shots, double aught, buck, then uh, slugs. Yep. The question is, are those women safe to be around or <laughs> Well, you might. You might. It might be like that uh, that movie, Misery. You just have to take your chances out here in Alaska. You never know what you're going to get. Maybe you can sell spices from home. Dr. Pepper, black pepper, salt, granulated lemon. Yep, so on and so forth. Yeah, 
that might be an option too. So Ed is saying his hunting consists of grouse, ptarmigan, and hare. Um, yeah, here where I was living or where I live, um, I heard from the Department of Wildlife that the numbers for small game here are really, really low this year. And so they're discouraging people from harvesting any of those this year. They want the numbers to get up before they're really encouraging anyone to harvest. <clears throat> Yeah, and the fishing rigs are crazy in Alaska. They, they're they hard to comprehend. Hey, happy camper van life. Nice of you to join. Job opportunity, park your truck across from the well driveway and charge people to get in. <laughs> I don't think that'd go over very well, <laughs> charging admission to something they already have to pay admission to. Most in Colorado now, but very difficult to get a uh, few license they hand out. Yeah, Colorado is basically on a lottery system. That's for sure. Way worse with over 100, 100 hunting zones, all different, multi-season. Yep. Nice looking dog, Ron. Exactly what you need. Yep. So Ron over at McGarvey's Homestead, uh, Ron, where's your channel right here? Ron just uh, posted a video. He has a new friend at his property. So I'll go over there and meet his new friend. She's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The snowshoe hair coming back slowly on that seven year curve. Next few years should be much better for hair. And Rob is saying he hasn't seen many in the last couple of years. What does moose meat taste like? Um, kind of like, but very mild. I think it has a very mild flavor. Um, I don't know if anybody else would agree with me, but it, and I think it's, it's mild, but it's also, at least the moose meat that I've eaten so far has been very tender. Very tender. Moose meat is the finest red meat, better than beef, bison, elk, and venison. Yeah, it, it is delicious. Very delicious. But the goods are hot. <laughs> and you're welcome, Ron. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm sorry. I wonder what the saying will be now that the statistics are reversed. You right? Yeah, I'm not sure why so many people uh, grind the moose up either. Um, cause I, I think it, I've only had it a couple of times, but the, the moose meat that I've tried was excellent. If you want a woman in Alaska, you got to bring them with or import. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely easier to grind stuff into hamburger or sausage than it is to uh, do a proper cut, that's for sure. Welcome back, Janet. Had moose sausage in a sausage form and a bit spicy. I like spicy. Spicy would work. Due to... Meeting an F-150. Yeah, I got tenderized in the uh, process. So the beef that I purchased, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, it actually has good flavor. Sometimes it has good flavor. I've had some of it that had no flavor. Um, but there's so much silver skin in it. Um, and gristle that 
it's tough to eat. Uh, so even if the flavor is good, the the chew to it is not tender. Even if I tenderize it or marinate it, it's just, it's not tender. Poor man likes deer more than moose, uh, but I like a gamey taste and not a lot of gamey. Yeah. Gamey, gamey taste doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't have a problem eating something that has a gamey flavor to it, a wild flavor. Just cut across the grain. That's what I say. Moose can be stringy, so grinding it makes it better for a lot of people. Just cut across the grain. It all chews the same after that. The butcher and Wasella made it. Interesting. Like moose burgers and moose meatloaf. The butcher wasn't very good if the beef had silver skin in it. Yeah, I'm not impressed with uh, the butcher um, by any means. And like I said, I don't know if it was that they brought in seasonal help uh, to help get through all the orders they had or if it is their typical way of processing, but it was not, it was not good. Stopped eating beef, it has no taste, haven't eaten it in years. I like beef. I have to admit, I like beef. Muskrat. That is one I've not tried. I wonder, is it oily tasting muskrat? I know beaver is very oily. Um, hey, Teresa, I'm glad you're here. I always tend to run long, so I say it's for an hour, and then I, I've been going for about two hours uh, on these last couple ones. Have you shot any uh, Sasquatch for the freezer yet? Nope. Nope. They they are not coming around either. And I, I think that's because of me, actually. They're probably, I'm probably not um, uh, <laughs> how do I say this? I probably don't have the Sasquatch scent that they like. They're like, oh, she smells a little too much like soap. Uh, so that might be scaring them away. Porcupine. Not good. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. I, I don't know. Sometimes you look at an animal and you think that probably wouldn't be good eating. And porcupine is one that I wouldn't have ever thought of eating. It says, yes, a little. Interesting. Hello, coach. Lived up there for 32 years. Harvested over 50 caribou. Rather have moose than caribou due to fat content. Nelchina heard not as big as it used to be back in the day. That's what I heard. Their numbers were really down um, this year. Um, I don't remember what the numbers were, but yeah, slim, slim pickings on the caribou this year, from my understanding. But the blacktail we get in Southeast are about the same size as Texas. <laughs> Oh my goodness. It, there is a reason you never see porcupine on restaurant menus. I will only put that in my mouth again if I'm starving to death. That's good to know. Last resort food. Oh my goodness. Mike is always cracking me up with his comments. Sasquatch lives matter. That's the t-shirt I need to make right there. The muskrat I've come across have smelled like the swamp they came from. I would think so. Yeah. Porcupine liver one time. My dad dared me to do it. It's pretty strong. Yeah, I'd be careful eating liver off of some animals, get too much vitamin A. 
Porcupine are my nemesis, very destructive critters. They love plywood and OSB. Oh, yikes. Yeah, I'm always afraid they're going to ring my trees and knock down trees I don't necessarily want knocked down. And black tail deer equals one moose. Yeah, that's that's pretty small. Uh, the deer are pretty small in comparison to the moose. I've seen some moose out here that rival the size of my expedition, my Ford expedition, as far as how tall they are. Yeah, Unit 13 caribou hunts are closed this year. And right now, with them coming back in, they would have no fat on them whatsoever. They would be very, very slender um, from their truck back from Canada. Grouse caught on your land helps for fresh live meats. I think Alaska allows tin. Maybe grouse walks on the ground. Yeah, the grouse here, they fly. Uh, the spruce grouse, they, they do fly. But for the most part, you'll see them on the ground. I had one that walked behind the cabin the other day. I was hoping uh, that the tracks were for from something else. But when I watched the security camera, it was a grouse uh, that was out there at about, I don't know, 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, moose is way better than elk. So I like elk better than venison, and moose is way better than elk. That's for sure. And buffalo. I, I wouldn't put buffalo up there um, with even elk. I don't, I personally don't care for the taste of buffalo. I mean, it's good, but it has a very distinct flavor to it. No, you can't buy moose meat up here. You can't buy any wild game meat up here um, that isn't commercially harvested. And they don't allow commercial harvesting of uh, large game like that. So you, you can't buy it. You'd have to find somebody that you know who has some to share. Beaver, the other red meat. Beaver is oily, though. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'll ever eat a beaver. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, and, and John, I have to admit, I'm glad to see you're in the chat and that you're feeling better too. Yep. Copper River Reds, best salmon to be sure. Do you net or line fish for them? Um, you're quite close to the Copper River. Yep, I'm close to the Copper River. Um, here... If um, I was going to fish for them, I would probably either do dip netting or uh, get a fish well. So when I get my license for fishing, I have to designate whether or not I'll be dip netting or having a fish well. And whatever you choose, that's what you have to stick with. Oh, that makes sense. So Ed is saying that his cabin has metal flashing on the lower part of it because of the porcupine. That'll come in and gnaw away to uh, wood siding underneath. That makes sense. Good night, CJ. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. And I will definitely look for your email. Rob is saying beaver is good. Hmm. Interesting. I would not have thought that. Hey, Adam and Phyllis joined us. They joined me. Joined us. I joined all of us here in the in the chat. I always say us because I'm always thinking about Kenai. <laughs> nice to have you guys here. I'm glad you were able to make it. Throw a blanket on the porcupine and collect the quills to make stuff and make money. Yeah. Can you sell? I guess that's the thing. You can't sell the meat, but can you sell things that you make with the hide or, in this case, the quills? Yeah, moose, even better than elk. That is saying something. Bison, not so good. Yeah, bison has a very a very distinct, strong flavor to it. Ten uh, ptarmigan and 15 grouse per day in your zone. Yeah, I haven't actually looked at what the harvest 
is here for small game, uh, just because I know they were talking about the numbers being low and they were really discouraging. The one thing that I do know, though, which kind of shocked me is that you're allowed to hunt and harvest up to 10 wolves a day here um, in this area, which I was like, yeah, if anybody ever saw 10 wolves in a day, that would be one heck of a day. Uh, trapping is different, but you could shoot up to 10 wolves a day here. Copper River Reds are salmon. They are the best salmon, according to a lot of people in Alaska, um, the best salmon. So they, they've swim right up this Copper River uh, that is behind my property. And it's a big deal here in Alaska. People come from all over the state and all over the world uh, to dip net, which is uh, you'd have this large net with a very large pole. You stand on the bank or you're in a boat um, and you catch them by the net full. Um, it's, it's pretty incredible to watch. Open a moose lodge. Wait, isn't there already a moose lodge? There probably is. Yeah, I should open up a, a, um, a lodge on the river so you can watch the, the bald eagles, watch the moose, watch the bears. Termagon is closed since February 15th, but grouse is open till March 31st. Interesting. I don't think there's termagon where I live, though. I've, I've only seen the grouse. I have not seen any termagon at all. I know a guy, but you got to really know a guy to get that moose meat. Yep. Yeah, you got to be good with people to get the moose meat. That's for sure. <laughs> it's good if handled right. I, I'm not I'm not opposed to eating some things. That's for sure. But there are some things where it's like, ah, might take some convincing. Oh, he mentioned that in one of his videos, the Moose Lodge. Oh, I guess I remember that. I My brain has been so scatterbrained lately. Sandhill Crane is a big deal. They call it ribeye of the sky. Yep, that's, I understand that. I understand that it's quite tasty. You pluck the quills out when they fall asleep because of the blanket. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, folks. Well, it has been close to two hours now. Um, so I'm going to shut her down in just a couple of minutes. So Alaska Cut the Cord will be out here getting some Copper River Reds this year. That's nice. That's nice. If I, if I do a business selling anything, it would hopefully be something that people need, not necessarily want. I've been in the luxury industry, and that's the first thing to get cut out of budgets. But I want to thank everybody for joining me tonight, uh, Janet and Clint and Gus and Dennis and Rob and Nomi and Ed and Bill, and Mike and Adam and Phyllis. Thank you for joining, even if it was right there at the end. And the kids. Sorry, I didn't. I just saw you. Uh, yeah, we don't need a whole lot of produce meats here. And Shearwater, thank you for joining. And Pamela, I appreciate all of you uh, joining and being in on the conversation. And Mike, I want to thank you again for your contribution. I really appreciate that donation. That that definitely helps out a lot. And um, as always, I'm you know very touched by that. Good night to everybody. I really appreciate you guys being here. And again, I will have a video out later this week. And I will see you guys again on Saturday night at midnight. And hopefully you guys were able to join me. And if not, I'll see you next Monday night, hopefully. So take care and have a good night, everybody. I appreciate each and every one of you. Seashell and Steve and Robert, Tracy, all of you. I hope you all have a good night. I'm signing off for now.